that's what God wanted me to do. And I couldn't find a charity that was efficient, meaning go direct to the needy. So I just drew a 25 mile radius around my living space and I found out that the most needy people have it to be across the border. I grew up in Isleta, so I went to Isleta and, I, and there's a scripture that says, whosoever does this to the least of mine will do it to me. So I spend my Saturdays at the Saragossa Bridge between Padilla, and exactly corner, it's, it's, it's shoots in Padilla. Okay. And uh, there's widows and, and war victims, I call them war victims, orphans mm -hmm. and widows that come over searching for free food, asking the Lutheran Church or the Catholic Church for f handouts for food. They offer to clean, wipe, uh, mop, water the plants. They offer to do anything for food. And when I saw that they were going back, no offense, when they were going back with broken cereal boxes and uh, jalapeno bent cans, and, and there was no protein in their diet. They were going back without a substantial uh, stable. I decided to go to Sam's and buy 100 pounds of beans, 100 pounds of rice, and for the last five years or so, I've been making sure they have at least a staple uh, food to survive. So let me ask a question. Despite the economic times, have you ever stopped doing that? Uh, no. So no matter what the economic time is, it might be a little bit more of a sacrifice to you, but you still make that purchase and you still provide those people that. Because it's not a luxury. To me, to me, that is a basic need. Just like the quality of life issues, quality of life issues are important, but unless we have life issues, i.e. employment taken care of, what good is a quality of life issue to a man who doesn't have a job with three kids? So to bring this back to the analogy of the city, so if I'm understanding you correctly by that same analogy, you propose cuts, but there's certain things that are non-negotiable that well, you will protect. The, the things that provide the basics. Like yeah. what? Well, uh, I mean, look, the city is supposed to provide what? Because you, said, a, say, you uh, said across the board cuts. So I want to make sure I understand. Well, well, perhaps. Well, I said across the board cuts in another interview as a possible solution. But now that you remind me of safety, for example, in other words, we talk about basics. Because the because the the, um, the city's basic is what safety, uh, health, and uh, providing transportation, or at least making sure we have access to transportation. Right? I think those are like three big things that that a municipality wants to provide. You want to be able to go somewhere without getting killed. That's our safety. You want to be able to eat and drink. Uh, whatever is available without fearing it being poisoned and you want to have some kind of way to get around the city so I think if the city sticks to those three basics yes you're right th those are those are basics that uh, either should not be cut or if they are cut that we should be very careful with them so if you're trying to make the point that I'm backtracking on cutting across the board okay I'll admit that some issues are more important than others but I would tell you where I will cut I, I, the first thing correction where I will look at first to cut Quality of life issues are very important, but they're not as important as life issues, as in safety, health, employment. So thank you for correcting me that there are some issues that deserve more focus. I use the example of the eagle. You know, the, I went to one of the meetings, she shall remain nameless because I don't want to offend anyone, but I went to one of the uh, city council meetings and they were showing off this wonderful eagle. Now, it's great to have a zoo expanded and a nice zoo and, 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 a, and a, this eagle that people can go watch. But you try to tell a man, which, by the way, again, going to 11 percent, that's one out of 10 people. You go to one out of 10 people in El Paso and say, excuse me, if you had a choice between a job or taking your kids to the zoo, which would you rather do? You, you, you realize, though, that's a very sloppy analogy. I mean, while you talk about cuts to quality of life, you also talked about incentives for people to move to El Paso and, and, and having to pay high property taxes would de-incentivize them. But one of the other things that people move to different communities for is the lifestyle that they can live while they're in that community. Would that not be counterproductive to your ultimate goal? I, I would have to take care of the unemployment issue before expanding our zoo anymore, before any more bike paths before any more parks. I am worried about the, the man. One out of 10 is a lot of people, Jaime. One out of 10, I feel their pain. I feel the pain of the foreclosures downtown. I feel the pain of the little old ladies who come out here with tears in their eyes when they're paying their tax payments six months late. You see the, the penalties for these tax payments? You see the permits they've had to pay for when they call a plumber and they're on a fixed income and they have to pay another $75? For permits where's the compassion you know the city hall just passed a, a thing with oh well after three days you don't have to do those permits anymore where were they when it first started why couldn't the inspector pick up the phone and say hey um, Ms. Wilson we have a line of people here could we make some kind of uh, 
I don't know, some kind of help, some kind of a benevolent uh, movement here, a benevolent initiative to help these people. There's 300 standing in line or 30 standing in line because they need a permit and they don't have any water. Why do we have to get, uh, charge them $74 for a permit when they're going through such tragedy? Um, one more question and then I'll let you make a, whatever a last statement you want to make. And, uh, and it just occurred to me because I was remembering the interview that you did. You had said something in there that I thought was inaccurate. So I wanted to give you an opportunity to clarify it. You were asked why you were running and you had mentioned that you didn't like the idea that the city council was going against the will of the people and that it's the city council's fault that um, the will of the people isn't being um, observed as it relates to the domestic partner benefits. Do you stand by that statement? Do you feel that that's an accurate statement? Uh, if you're asking me, do I disapprove of city council trying to overturn the referendum of November? The answer is yes. I, I, I disapprove of city council trying to overturn the, the referendum that was approved in November. But that never actually happened. And that, that's the, were you here during those I was Tuesdays? here. We we greeted each other well, that day, I, Manny. Maybe you need to look at the records and listen to Susie Bird. She she tried three different. So you mean ways. a member of city council? No, well there was. Well, I mean, you, you don't mean the majority of city council because if it was the majority of city council, they would have overturned it, right? In point well, of fact, it hasn't been overturned. Is well, that correct? Something happened in the middle of their discussion that didn't uh, require them to overturn it because it's been suspended, you know, by a judge. And what was it that happened? A judge suspended, uh, you know, uh, put it on freeze until until it can be. Actually, I don't know why he put it on freeze. I guess he wants to examine it further or something. He didn't want to suspend it benefits to. The anyone. reason that the 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 uh, that the law uh, that the uh, referendum hasn't been enforced is because the judge is examining the constitutionality of that uh, ballot measure. No. Okay. The city has defended that. In other words, the city is, is complying actually with what you are advocating for. Well, that's not what I heard, Jaime. Perhaps we need to look at the records because well, I heard... you understand I, that the city has filed a lawsuit. You know that. I, I heard the city attorney say that the language in the ordinance was inadequate, therefore it had to be uh, either rewritten or um, turned down. Now, the interesting thing about that, Jaime, is that if you look at the city's health plan on page 31, their definition of employee does protect uniform officers, uh, policemen, and so forth. So, so this is an, an example, to me, of somebody creating an argument that doesn't exist for their own benefit. Which is interesting, though, because you, you actually really haven't answered the question I was asking you, though. Then I'm and that not in is, favor of overturning that. No, I'm no, not, I'm not saying that you are. I'm saying you, you are aware of the fact that the city is actually the one that is, that is fighting against the police department that w or the police union that actually filed the injunction. You understand that, right? Uh, I understand. In other words, the city is backing your position. Well, um, I, I just remember, uh, Jaime, what I remember is that the city was trying to overturn the referendum. If, okay, if, no, if no, they, no, no. See, that's an inaccurate statement, and they, that's not being truthful. Well, to you, and, and we, you and I have exchanged our emails about truth today. <laughs> that's not being truthful to the voters. Well, I, I heard Susie Bird. You look at the records very clearly. Say we have to, we have to overturn this because the language would cut out benefits to many people that are not supposed to lose their benefits. Don't you remember that? Fantastic. But point of fact is, City Council did not turn overturn because that because the judge intervened. Or no, this that's thing not why. Why, the, why. That's not why. I, I, well, I, you said I would. Think that an, I would think that a candidate would be a little well, bit more familiar I, with the, I, I, with the I'll, issue. I'll say it again and let the listeners, let the viewers decide this. They went so far as to say we're going to put it as a referendum. To this day, they still want to put it on the May referendum as a city charger. Do you remember them submitting a city charger, uh, making a motion for a city charger? I remember that motion it? not passing. Then how can you not? How can you not describe that? How can you not? Because the city because no, it was the wording. declined it. No, because the wording they could not agree on the wording. So it did not get passed. That's true. So the city's decision was for it not yet. yet. Okay, did so, not get passed yet. So now we're talking about supposition of the future. Yes, it did not get passed yet. Okay, so point of fact, how this happened and how we end up where we're at today is it was the police officers union that stepped in and sued and said, no, we do not want this to be imposed. It was the city that went to the courts and said, no, this is what the people voted. We do want this to be imposed. Well, your mentor, the person you identified as your mentor, is named in that lawsuit because he attached himself to the city's attorneys. You know, Jaime, as I said earlier, I started with that as an interest, but I am not a part of that movement anymore. Okay. Okay. So uh, I just know that's fair. Okay. But um, so what is your opponent? 
done or not done that you would do differently if elected to district one? Done or not done that I would do. I think the biggest difference, Jaime, is, uh, and I'll give you an example with what happened today. The meeting today was a perfect example of the miscommunication, the uh, lack of uh, cost-benefit analysis before they make decisions. Example, they, they were talking about protecting open spaces. I, I have it right here, it's item 11A. Item 11A talks about, and this is verbatim, leaving ponding areas open for wildlife. Even, even Eddie Olguin, with all due respect to Eddie, okay, he says, excuse me, is that all of El Paso or just West Side or what? My point being that the communication, the transparency, the openness is not there. When I'm elected, we're not going to have this type of language. We're going to say every pond, ponding area in El Paso. We're going to be more clear. Another example, riparian. Do you know what riparian means or riparian? I don't even know how to say it. Do you know what riparian means? It applies to birds. Well, according to, we found out today, instead of saying <laughs> where wildlife lives, which that's actually what it means according to, it, it, when I'm, you know, instead of explaining exactly what they mean by that particular area, you know, where wildlife comes and feeds on the uh, royal water and we shouldn't fence it off and all that, instead they use this kind of language, which to me is an example, I'll finish with this, it's an example of not informing the voters sufficiently. Wait, wait, wait a minute, so you're advocating that we dumb it down oh, and not use the appropriate you know, you know, verbiage? Would you, would you call it dumb it down if a lawyer talked to you in common language instead of in legal jargon? Would you call that? I, I understand that there is a process that uh, under which we are governed, and and that project and that process uh, has a set of, uh, of of terms that may not be used by the average voter. But okay, I mean, I okay. I how think about this then? How about using the word "all" instead okay. of "ponding areas"? Would that help? And that's not dumbing it down. That's being more clear. So one of the things I would do is be more clear. Click on my website. You know exactly what's on the spending table. Uh, this is what we're working on, this is what the cost-benefit analysis is. How much would it cost to have that done, by the way? When I do it, it won't cost you anything because I'll do it for free. In other words, I'm going to report, I'm go yes sir, I'm going to report on, you'll be able to click on my city website and find out exactly who's doing what, at what cost, what they expect to get out of it, what the guarantees are, who's involved and what the consequences are when they don't do it on time. I'm going to hold those people, especially those trash can people, those trash can people that want to put a computer chip in my trash can, I want to see the contract where they're going to guarantee that it's going to save us money before we give them a million dollars or whatever it is they're asking for. Okay, and final question. You, you've mentioned um, several times publicly, and you've mentioned it on your website, and you've mentioned it today, you, you make a lot of frequent references to, to God. Uh, we're back to God. We well, start with God and we end with God. <laughs> the Alpha and the Omega, if I may. <laughs> um, By the way, I mean, am I allowed to say that you go to church three times a week? Man, I love you, brother. I had no idea. Well, you know. I, I'll go to your church if you come to mine. How's that? I, I'll take that. All right. I'll, I'll take invited. you up on that. You're I absolutely invited. will. I love um, that. Now, one of the questions that I have, though, about that is, do you feel that it's appropriate to invoke God. I know that at the uh, West El Paso Democrats, when you were there as their guest, you, you made a <laughs> and you request that sounded, you made a request that sounded a lot more like a demand oh, no, and, and no. asked it for an invocation, um, which, you delivered uh, which I, I, I happily obliged. As a holy man that you are. Well, <laughs> I, God, I, godly man. I, I believe God loves all her children. Um, <laughs> so my question to you, though, is do you feel it's appropriate to have a visitor? Uh, no, no, to have such a, uh, I guess, such a free flow between God and government? Okay, let me answer it this way. Number one, the invocation already exists before Manny was born here mm -hmm. at city council meetings. That's number one. So I wouldn't be doing anything different. Number two, when I went to your meeting, uh, I, d I didn't have a full comprehension that actually I was just a guest there. Perhaps I was out of line by requesting it at somebody else's meeting. But I may, I'm not talking about bringing religion with me to, to government. I'm talking about the God that I believe who is by definition in every corner of life cannot be taken out of our thoughts to the extent that uh, we'll, we'll pray before we we pray before we do things. We consider benevolence and kindness and love towards our brother before we do things. That's the kind of God that I serve. What if folks believe the exact same thing, but they don't believe in the existence of a deity? What if they believe well, it's, good, it's, it's good humanity to 